First one is Nina Simone in Concert, Emergency Ward. Uh, this is only four songs. My Sweet Lord by the Beatles. Today is a Killer, I don't know who wrote that song. And also Isn't It a Pity by George Harrison. Uh, the version on here is 11 minutes long of Isn't It a Pity and it's my favorite cover um, of any, but my favorite cover that I've, that I've heard. I listen to it a lot. And uh, this is a Bob Dylan album that I only selected because I'm trying to get a lawsuit going on the graphic design team at Columbia Records or whoever put this out because this is a, a flagrant copy of the cover of Nina Simone's Emergency Ward. Do you see the similarities are undeniable? And I don't think you could argue that it was, it was arrived at independently, you know? So buy this while you still can. And then this is a soundtrack to Morning of the Earth, which is a surf movie um, that I really like. Uh, I tried to find the vinyl for this, but I just got the CD. And the soundtrack is really beautiful, and it's a beautiful movie. Um, I believe an Australian surf film. And it's cool because it's not surf music as you would normally associate it with, like Dick Dale or something. It doesn't quite sound like that. Um, and I was definitely thinking about the ocean and surfing, etc. for the album we just, we just made. So Morning of the Earth soundtrack. This is a new, a new score to an, a, a very old animated film by our friends in the band Dunion. Uh, the score is called Hoxan, and it's a very beautiful album, very beautiful cover, always great graphic design on the Dunion records. And uh, there's a cool monster on the back, uh, Dunion, fantastic. Towns Van Zant, Our Mother the Mountain, very. Sky's Got Town of Van Zandt also over there, live at the Old Quarter. Um, you know, Dylan, for all of his graphic design faults, I'd say Dylan and Towns Van Zandt are kind of the only two guys that really should play guitar by themselves, you know. Uh, Bobby Gentry, this is the best of, has, um, it doesn't have my favorite song by her, which is a song called Courtyard. Uh, that's a song with this really present and, uh, grainy vocal sound that I've, I've often tried to, uh, to capture in my own recordings. Um, there's an Ever Everly Brothers best of, the hit sound of the Everly Brothers. In a time of confusion, two young voices dedicated to singing truth with a capital T, it says on the back. Um, and on this record, there's a lot, quite a bit more uh, duet harmony singing than uh, group harmony singing which is partially influenced by the Everly Brothers or the, uh, the Lovin' Brothers or et cetera. The Auction by David Axelrod. Great, great record. Uh, and I like when David Axelrod produces the Electric Prunes. Like I thought on this record, but I guess it was just on the one before it. He was still involved in this one. He left his mark. This stuff. Karar Collective, I've also not heard this, um, but I think this is a, a King's David, King David's Harp uh, on the cover of, that uh, this gentleman is playing on the cover of this album. Um, very interesting instrument. There's a Ethiopic volume called, I, don't, I forget which one it is, the artist is Alemu Aga, and that was a record I listened to a lot. It's just um, King David's Harp uh, drones with some like reciting vocals. So I'm excited to check this out. Okay, for the first record, I'm going to pick this record, Sonic Youth, Dirty, uh, because the song 100% has one of my favorite pieces of recorded m music to me, personally. Uh, it's a, the drum fill, or it's just a hit, it's a crack. Uh, right before, or right after Thurston Moore says, uh, and all you men are slime, crack. Um, I think it's kind of the best sounding drum I've ever heard. Um, this record uh, I've been listening to a lot lately. I didn't know like the the story of the whole record and sort of that it was like it's supposed to tell this story of these dudes, um, the, the Celtic Soul Brothers. But when I when I heard the story about it, listening to the whole record and like knowing about the things makes it a really interesting record and very great and gives that song 
new perspective. Um, I picked this record, which is a newer record, but when we were recording the record, or getting ready to record the record, uh, I remember I saw her at Carnegie Hall, and the production on this record is kind of insane, and there's a lot of vocal effects stuff, vocal treatment stuff on the record that I think influenced me when making this, uh, our new record, our third record. So if you haven't heard this yet, I think it's really worth checking out. This record uh, is great because there's a song on it called Magnolia, which has always been a very romantic song to me, um, it means a lot. And I once tried to have a band that I played in cover it for me, um, to give as a gift to somebody very important to me, and they refused. <laughs> So that never happened. But that song, Magnolia, has a big thing in my life. This record, The Hissing of Summer Lawns by Joni Mitchell, is amazing because uh, I think a lot of people who are surface level Joni listeners have a tendency to listen to things like Clouds or Blue. And this record is a good example of uh, an artist reaching uh, for new things in their music. and. The song The Jungle Line is a really great example of like how you can bridge the gap and still be respectful to like the way you write music but change your instrumentation. This record is by Flying Saucer Attack and I used to play in this band that was in Philadelphia for a while and the band members recommended to me this band, I'd never heard it before and it really affected me in a big way and affected the next few records that I had made. So if you've never heard this stuff, it's really worth checking out. This record is uh, a fantastic record, but um, the second song on our new record uh, has a guitar part that was heavily influenced by uh, Fripp. And I, I tried to do sort of like a Fripp sound for, for it, but it, I don't think I necessarily got it, but he was influential to me on that record. And then last, just because I think people need to listen to it, um, the soundtrack to Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence uh, by Sakamoto. This is one of, I probably listen to this soundtrack and this record probably more than anything these days. Um, the, the theme is incredible and Sakamoto has always been one of my heroes compositionally and I think that if you've never heard this, you should definitely, definitely listen to it.